I feel like it's something I have to remind myself too when I drive in and I get defensive because I do by nature. I drive in. Oh, and you're I know already they're coming at you. Up, yes. They're coming at you and you're coming at them. And here we go. <laughs> I got I got to have room on the side of my trailer to tie, you know. <laughs> Welcome to the Luke Branquino Show. We are here at the American Western Weekend, and I'm here with Haley Kinzel, four-time world champion barrel racer, and she has a chance at $100,000 because she had such a great year last year at the national finals. Haley, thank you for joining. San Antonio, I, I haven't been in a couple years, but we used to be in the barn fairly close to the arena. Now they were on concrete. You could get mats put down, but a lot of shavings, which you still had to buy. Sure. This year, quite a bit different. And I use, uh, I'll use Houston as, it is an, as an example. That rodeo expanded, or that facility expanded so much, mm -hmm. they went and bought a lot for the contestants. It's 15 the, minutes down the road. 15 minutes down the road. Yeah. Stalls, you know, free stalls, free, uh, free shavings, free hookups. For, hospitality is amazing. Mm -hmm. And then you got your pass to get in there, they get you set up and you know, no limit the, on family members. Right. It, really, no limit on horses. You know, if you're up in that set, you bring what you. They take care of you. They make yep. sure they have plenty of room, and the bucking horses are right across the way. And you yeah. can tell they're in good spots. And I, yeah, I hope the rough stock horses are are treated better than than ours are at San Antonio. I haul in and out of that particular rodeo, but the people that stayed on the grounds had trouble with the stall barn they were moved to, not having electricity, not having a wash rack. The day it was hot, it was really hot. Right. Um, things like that are just kind of basic necessities right. that you think. Well, if you're going to provide this for us, provide something good, or otherwise, just tell us not to stay there. That right. way, we know. Um, so, for example, uh, with the rough stock events, I I have made this point before to the PRCA over a couple rodeos, and I should preface this by saying I feel like the one stick I have to stand on is sister and where she goes because right. I am pretty frugal about how many runs she makes and where and. So there have been rodeos that have been unfavorable conditions. So we've reasoned with the committee, with the PRCA. We've had discussions beforehand, offered solution, saw no change. So I didn't show up on her. Or I ran her in a couple rounds and I didn't get on her in the finals. Right. And I would tell them beforehand, like, hey, I'm going to do this and I'm going to say why. And I'm not going to, to bash you or make this ugly, but I am going to say, here's where this horse is gonna come. She's gonna come to a good place. Right. And if you're unwilling to make this a good place, then I'm not going to bring this here. So I've had that conversation about the, the bucking horses. If the bucking horses at some rodeos aren't expected to buck four times in 30 hours, why are the barrel horses right. expected to run four times in 30 hours? You know, and f so for that rodeo, I may go back, but it may take two horses. I may go back and I may not bring her at all. I may ride her all the way till the finals, but if I feel like it's a, a conflict for her on what's best for right. her, then I won't get on her. And then I will say afterwards why, because why? people will worry. And but my fans, her fans will say, is something wrong with her? And I'll say, absolutely not. I just made the decision that this was not ideal for her. So when it came to a rodeo like this and the conditions we were faced with, it was easy for me to say, it's, I don't have to bring her back. Right. I, I can come back if you want me to. Um, all of us contestants can come back. I got some horses back. needing seasoned. Yeah, absolutely. I've always got something else I could ride um, and something that may do well there. But I had, have made a point to prioritize that rodeo for her and I don't have to. So if a fan wants to see her run, they're gonna have to go somewhere else. Right. Well, and for that, for me, at a young age, when people were trying to make changes, I didn't care. I just wanted to go rodeo. That's I was there to go rodeo. The older I got, I'm like, well, this is kind of some bullshit. We need to figure out how to change this and make it better, not just for me, but for the next young generation. kids coming up, the next generation. But rodeo is such a turnover. I mean, the contestants turn over so fast. Yes. Like for my the example for me, I tried to make a change later in my career. I wish I'd have started earlier. Sure. But now that I'm out, these kids that are wondering why I was trying to make the changes, they're trying to make the changes. The but ones. you don't have the you don't have that voice because everybody's like, you know what, I tried, we we didn't get it done. We didn't get done. And and that's the unfortunate thing about rodeo, similar to what you're saying about the committees, the PRCA could stand up and say, Listen, you wanna be a PRCA approved rodeo, you need to do this. And obviously we know why they don't, because that 
approval money that DRCA gets. Sure. They, don't, they don't want to ruffle feathers. No, they can't. But they can for okay. the betterment of the contestants <laughs> because that's can. who they're supposed to represent. You know, they're they're the organizing body of the Professional Rodeo Cowboy Association. Sure. Sure. So they need, and, and I'm not talking bad on them or anything, but they need to prioritize the cowboys before cowgirls, cow people. The cow folks. Cow folks. I like being called a cowboy. Thank you. I wanted to be a cowboy since I was a kid. But now so you've got I'm the cowgirl trying. channel they're going to put you I, on. And that's great. I'm, I'm happy, but I like to be on the cowboy channel too. I, <laughs> I really don't mind. I, I feel like it's like one of those, did we ever, did anybody ever have a problem with this up until uh, the whole deal in Wyoming with the cowboy uh, what is it? The Brokeback Mountain? No, 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 no. Please, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the college that their mascot was cowboys, and there was a oh, group yeah. that got University mad. Of Wyoming. Yeah, there was some group that got mad and said, "Oh, you need to change that because it's it's I guess sexist. I don't know what else that would be. What, what do you? Word. What would you call? Well, I don't know. Wyoming what, cow person? The cow folks. I don't know. I, that's what I would call them. Cow polks, cow folks, cow, cow, cow somethings, cow persons. But I think, anyways, I think the University of Wyoming won the whole deal because every, everybody that lived there was like, we don't care. Yeah, we it. told but, them pound sand. Yeah, exactly. That's probably the best thing to say. So, right. as a cowboy myself, as right. a female cowboy um, in this industry, I see exactly what you're talking about of the turnover. And I feel that the same way when I was first starting, I was like, I don't want to get involved in change. I'm just happy to be here. Right. And now that I feel like I've established a bit of a place, right. I now have a voice. Um, I was talking to Jackie about this recently that she is still establishing that place in rodeo. As, That's as, Jackie Crawford, by the way. That is Jackie Crawford. The, on, the only Jackie. The only what Jack other Jackie? Well, right. Um, anyways. Don't ask us, Kenzie, yeah, anyway. sorry. Silly question. But <laughs> yeah, well, she made the point that as a breakaway roper, they are still establishing themselves, even right. though she is a staple in breakaway roping. Yeah. Breakaway roping in rodeo is still getting its own foot in the door. And so understandable that she maybe can't ruffle some feathers just yet, but looking forward to the day that she can stand up for her event and right. her sport, women in the sport, the horses versus me. Maybe I couldn't have said all of this at any other rodeo, but right. at San Antonio, knowing people I do around there, like I said, it being a hometown rodeo, us representing each other in various ways, that's where I had a place to speak. And in some ways, I feel like we all, as this turnover happens and the new group comes in, we, we seem to continue to fight old battles that oh, have yeah, already been exactly. fought. Yeah. And some of them have been conquered and we should leave them in the past. And um, we, the biggest thing in barrel racing, as y'all know, recently has been the drag, uh, getting a tractor in <laughs> the gate, in and out the gate. Three, every three, right? Every three, preferably. <laughs> Anytime, <laughs> hand rake, drag, it, whatever. But it's great to see, it's awesome. But that was one point that was made about San Antonio was, well, they gave us a drag, so shouldn't we be grateful? <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, that in a way that sounds like you're kidnapped, but here's a sandwich, yeah, so right. say thank you. Yeah, right. And I'm thinking, oh, that's great, we, we fought for that, we got that, we leave that in the past. That doesn't mean we say everything else can fall apart exactly. because we got the one good thing. So what I'm encouraged to do is stay in the sport long enough that we can fight a battle and put a, a, a lid on it and move on to the next one, stand up on that box and move right. on to the next thing because otherwise we will keep in a cyclical thing of trying to establish ourselves right. and never being able to grow. Meat and seafood from ButcherBox checks all the boxes. It's versatile, delicious, and they have everything I'm looking for when it comes to quality. Like 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, pork that is raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood. Right now, ButcherBox is offering new members an incredible deal. Free chicken nuggets for a year and 10% off your first box when you sign up today. That's a 22-ounce bag of gluten-free chicken nuggets in every order for a year when you sign up at butcherbox.com forward slash Luke and use code Luke. Claim this deal at butcherbox.com forward slash Luke and use code Luke. That's happened in the time in the you know time events as far as steer wrestling, and team roping, and, and um, tight and rope. You look at the crossfire rule. Sure. How long have they been going in circles about that? You know, and where just is the, the replay system that it, should have been exactly. here a long time ago? You know, um, and that's hopefully that's something they'll figure out. And I mean, all that's going to do is benefit the contestants. You bet. And if the contestants could stick together long enough, and, and I don't, I'm not saying a, a holdout, but just stick together long enough to put your foot down, and say, hey. This is for us. We're making these changes to better it for us. That will better the sport. Why not do it? Exactly. How about gate men? 
<laughs> How about them? <laughs> I'm going to switch com gears completely. So Lindsay and I were talking the other day about, oh, we were talking to Kay the other day, right? Salinas. I pulled in in her Tahoe, and it really irritates me when they give you those stickers that go on your windshield. Because then they're stuck to that car. And you car. can't get them off. No. Like you stay you, on that car. You will, you will drive that car only. Yeah. Everywhere. Oh, everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. And then when you go to trade in, they're like, what's that sticker? Like, it's been there for 10 years. It's it has never not off. coming off. And pretty soon you just got a whole string of them up and mm -hmm. down. But I did learn, Brad Gleason taught me this. If you take the sticker off and pat it on your jeans and get some of that fuzzy hair mm -hmm. from your coat or wool jacket or whatever, it you'll be able to pull it off. Interesting. Yeah. I've never once really? thought about that nor tried it. And then obviously curl the corners so you're able to. It gets absolutely it. curl the corners, of course. Yes. Well, I learned to buy a, a little razor dill, the kind that they have oh, at the, the oil scrapers, change yeah. places, and just go to work on it. Um, definitely, probably not the best thing for your windshield. It doesn't hurt. Or the sticker. Um, but you know, do we know that? Now you, yes, I know. I feel like it would hurt my finger, though. If it's like, well, if you cut your finger, it would hurt your finger, not well, the windshield. Nobody said I should have a razor. I'm just saying I could get a razor and possibly. Right, you could. Yes. Could Next maybe time, get it off that way. Tamp it on your wool jacket. Tap it on the wool Or your jeans, jeans or something dirty. That makes a lot more sense and probably less expensive. And you won't cut your finger off? Probably not. Back to Gateman. We were pulling into Salinas and they gave us a sticker. And they like, you gotta put it on your windshield. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not putting it on my windshield. It's my wife's car. I don't want it to stick there. Mm -hmm. And I wish she was in here to tell the story because she really tells it better than I do. I did not get upset. Ish. He reached in my car, our car, grabbed it off the dash, peeled it off, and I'm pulling away like I don't know how I didn't run him over and I wish I would have. Sorry, gate man, if you're listening to this, anyway. And slaps it on the windshield. That's weird. I was very upset. I I don't remember this. She said I drove off, put it in park, don't and- don't remember this. Did I go chew his ass? Yeah, Billy, Billy Boogening. Now you don't know Billy. You know Billy? Oh, I know Billy. <laughs> Not well. Billy was, quick story, and then you get back to your story. Yes. The f Billy, like, we were in Great Falls, Montana, and I remember all of this because this is the first pro rodeo check I ever won at a rodeo. Like I filled Great my Falls? permit. I filled my permit and then I went to some summer rodeos and like I was up there and I'm like new and I don't right. know anyone and I'm very shy and not anymore, but no, I, no. I was very shy and uh, I felt like such an outsider and all these cool people and I get on this golf cart to ride up to the so office and this big guy sits down and the golf cart shifts and uh, I slide no just kidding um, <laughs> is a lot larger than me um anyways he says hi and he introduces himself and I'm just like I know who you are why do you want to know my name and it made me feel so important because somebody he, spoke to me and asked me what my name was and I want to check that night did did he go hello I'm Bill it was something along those lines <laughs> yeah was, uh, I'm Billy yeah he, so Forever he place he is heart. he's yeah Billy's awesome. He I seem like a very good guy. High school rodeo, college rodeo with him. Entered are uh, we buddy together? Um, Lindsay now, Lindsay likes him. He was one of the traveling but okay. um, partners that Lindsay liked. And now he chews out the parking people for you. Well yeah I mean we we kind of gave that guy the what for. Okay. But I mean I think there's so many instances at rodeos where that happens. And Jackie made a great point. She said, do you think that person gets paid $20 an hour to do that or volunteers yeah. or, you know, for whatever, which is true. Absolutely. But you don't have to be an asshole still. Mm -hmm. And it's, I feel like it's something I have to remind myself too when I drive in and I get defensive because I do by nature. I drive in oh, and you're I know they're coming at up, you. Yes. They're coming at you and you're coming at them. <laughs> Here we go. I've got I to gotta have room on the side of my trailer to tie, you know. Um, so it's just like I have to simmer myself down and approach it like I'm not going to be an asshole either. Like we've both got to meet in the middle here. If you have right. a job to do, I have a job to do. You to think your job is as important as I think my job is. So we're gonna, we need to just make this peaceful, make but it work. We both, it needs to work for both of us. It needs to work for everyone here. It's like a relationship. It is, but you're not gonna run over me and right. I'm not going to be just rude back to you either, unless you're rude first and then I will be. Um, but I have trouble with that. I'm still working on that. <laughs> but uh, that's just my personal confession, yeah. It's, but when it comes to the horses, I'll, that's, it's, it feels like I'm sure moms get this, like when your kid is attacked, it's like you're attacking my horses, you're attacking my kid. Right. I will, but mama claws come out, and I mean, I'm not even a mom, but I... Without claws. Yeah, I, but you don't know. Um, <laughs> they're there. But yeah, it's, it's hard because I do think they take their jobs very seriously. I think they're often given a 
think this is how you have to do it. Something right. coming from above that they don't even necessarily understand or even agree with. Right. But they're told this is how you have to do it and their performance is reviewed afterwards of whether they get to come back. Exactly. And they probably like getting to come back, especially if they're a volunteer and they get some sort of perk. Like authority. A, a they get authority. Authority, they get a vest, they get a pin, they get a rodeo ticket, whatever they get out of this is has got to be valuable to them in some way, right. even if it makes no sense to me. Um, and that that's something I have to tell myself. This this must be important to them if they're here, because it, it's I can't I can't sympathize with it. I don't think I could do it. But there's something they're getting out of this that they value, so they're going to take it very seriously. So with that said, being able to meet in the middle on all of this, being reasonable. If they can be reasonable with me and I can be reasonable with them, right. I feel like this can be so simple. Um, Jackie and I have talked about it a lot with the breakaway roping coming into the rodeos because in some ways those girls are, you know, they're brand new to right. the pro rodeos. So they pull in and take whatever parking spot they can get because they're a little defensive. They don't know the surroundings and, and we're kind of thinking, okay, we've all just got to work together here. We've been doing this for a long time. We don't have to steal parking spots. We, we don't have to have fist fights in the parking lot. Like we can wait, all just make wait. it work. We don't have to. We don't no. have to. Has there been fist fights? Oh, not that I know of. I've never been in a oh, fight. I if I did, like I would be very good. Or um, no, I think if I was in a fist fight, you would know. Like, it would make news. It would it be would on my Instagram news. story. Um, we did think about it at the NFR, like, with Stevie and I, because everybody said that I was criticizing her oh, horse yes. for falling in the ninth round, and I didn't even know her horse fell down. But we were, because, Stevie and I are friends. Because you, something said about fraternity horses versus rodeo horses. Yeah, I said, like, that's the difference between a rodeo, like a good rodeo horse and a barrel horse or a jackpot horse that doesn't make the NFR and doesn't run at the NFR is they don't know how to stand up when it's slick, and sis does. And I think everybody assumed I was talking about Stevie because she ran right before me and fell down, but I can't see back there. Right. Like, when you're in tunnel, and I don't watch, I don't watch the girl before me at a jackpot. <laughs> Much less the girl for me. I'm not like, hey, good luck, you know, like, and no, slap we're hands on our way out. Yeah, yeah, like, kind of focused. But, anyways, Stevie and her friends, like, very good friends. I think she's one of the greatest people ever. But we were like, you know what we should do? We should make a video in the contestant parking lot, like, get, put, like, the 80s workout gear on, like, the neon clothing, and just wrestle. Like, just wrestle it out, fake fight, and oh, go Facebook fake. Live. Oh, it was 100% going to be fake. But, I mean. well, I. I like her. I do like. No, Stevie. I mean you could you could still fight somebody without it being totally fake. Mm, I don't know. If I oh, could. you couldn't. I don't. Know oh, you. I could. Oh, okay. It's a personal it thing. Yes. No. Um. It, there's a little pride involved, but. Of course. Um, no, it was so. It, we just thought that would be really funny to be able to make it perfectly clear as mud to everyone that we. This is a joke, guys. Right. Like, this is a big freaking misunderstanding. And you, but you get on the social media and those warriors get on there and start def taking defense they of take something sides. they don't have a clue what you're yeah. even trying to come across. But it takes sides when there are no sides. Uh, so that's scary. So on that, you were just, you were getting your go-around buckle. Your, I don't know, how many have you got? Like 72? How many go-around buckles? 21. Yeah. Thank you. Another I hit 21 in round 10 this year. 21 in oh, Vegas. Oh, that's right. And, yeah. And Sis that's has really won cool. every one of them. Every one of them. That's, that's very cool. But you were up there getting your go-around buckle. And obviously it must have been recorded. And you said what you said because that's what you said and you didn't mean it in any malice or anything. I just used a big word. Did I malice use a big word? Malice is not a big word. That's For me, it's six a big word. letters long. But it, the, just the under anyway. <laughs> the meaning is big? The meaning is big. Yeti, it's built for those who value shared time and personal pursuit. Whether it's on the rodeo trail or at the family ranch, dust proof, waterproof, and virtually indestructible. Yeti's Go Box has a removable cargo tray and divider, perfect to use for a camp pantry, ammo can, or tackle box. The pack and stack design holds everything you need so nothing holds you back. Yeti's Go Box comes in three different sizes, the 15, the 30, and the big boy, the 60. It's perfect for rodeo cowboys who want it all. You were just trying to tell people what you thought and yet now they're getting all butthurt. Have you ever said anything without thinking? Because I do that. I've, I I've, just did. I said malice. No, exactly. I was just, <laughs> you, would have, you wouldn't have used that word if you knew what it meant. No, just what kidding. are you laughing at? Uh, just <laughs> keep laughing. It makes it better. I, I speak without thinking a lot. And I definitely do there. Um, one, because you're cutting up with, in an interview with, right. with Flint and Joe. Like, nothing is thought through. Two, I was exhausted, like, beyond exhausted. Because you were sick, getting over I, your sickness. I, I, yep, I was sick when I saw you on Tuesday. My, that same day, my mom had got food poisoning. That was supposed to be my day off during the day to rest. 
I didn't rest. I t did horse stuff all day long because she was laid up in a hotel room for a day and a half. Uh -huh. um, came down to walk down the alley like this and then walked back out the alley. She could barely hold my jacket. I was like, you don't have to come. Well, but, yeah, she can't miss it. So I'm um, happy to have her, but it was terrifying. And then I was very, very tired the next day. Next day I got an IV. So this was a day and a half after. And when you went to go around, you stay up late. It's, yes. like, a, it's like a good and bad thing. Sometimes I'd rather be second. Um, be <laughs> I'm not kidding. Like it's, they're so late. And you have to go to the buckle ceremony, and it's awesome. It's an honor. You get to bring your family up there. Um, that was my fourth of that week to go up there. So I was, you know, the drill. You oh, yeah. run out of things to talk about, and then there's this controversy going on about the ground. And I was so dumb to the whole thing. I did not know anybody slipped. It was great for me. I ran a three, so I'm thinking the ground's great. It's amazing. Because it felt fine the way she did it. I even said in like three or four interviews in the back when we're in the press room before we go up there that, hey, the ground's great. The ground, ground crew's doing awesome. Now I feel like a complete mess. <laughs> so I was like, sorry. But I did know they were trying. And I think I was kind of trying to make that point. Like, I think it's been good. It's just firm. We're running on a basketball court. Right. And there is no drag beforehand. There's 15 times 2 is 30. So 30 1,400 pound bucking horses landing on the first and second barrel stakes every night before you go. There's foot traffic Not from the exactly judges. Not on there, but close. 100% on there. Literally like Fine. dead on. Pretty close. Pretty anyway, close. We'll pretty just, close. I'll go with it. So they're right there. Pick up horses, pound and back oh, horses. Yeah. Those are big horses. Third barrel is usually a pretty good barrel. You don't really see a lot of slips, but what does happen there is the headers turn left, and bulldoggers slide. I mean, there's just stuff. There's foot it traffic. There's, down, it yeah. gets packed down. Um, the judges walk on the right side by that camera pit, so behind the first barrel, they wow. walk back and forth the whole rodeo, usually on that side. I've watched this. I, don't ask me why I know a lot of these things. This is some scientific barrel raising stuff this from the is, Thomas and Mac right here. Seriously. And so what really bothered me about the criticism of all of this is everybody was saying, well, why don't y'all try and get the ground better? Why, why are y'all just accepting the bad situation we have? I'm thinking, we have a group text with all 15 girls in the WPRA. We all talk about the ground every night. Then we move on. Like someone takes it to the ground guy, Randy Spragans. He's the best. Uh, yes, He's like Randy's the absolute is amazing. best. Yes. And he tries so hard. He loses sleep over it he stays up he's up there at four o'clock in the morning working the ground trying to get it right for that night I mean he is trying and so if you're going to criticize effort like that that bothers me because we are trying right. we're getting it as good as we can but we have all these other factors that are rodeo right. that is the sport unfortunately it's not a jackpot barrel race if you ever go to like a fraternity like the pink buckle for example they have barrels are staked you have exhibitions on the stakes but the exhibitions are a previous day. You don't even exhibition on the stakes the same day as the maturity is going to run. Why is that? Because every time a horse steps foot on that dirt and turns it and moves it, they have to reset it. We don't get to do that at the NFR. We have how many events go before the barrel racing? Six? Six, six five, five, four, six. Six before the Seven. barrel? Seven. Bareback, steer Seven. wrestling, Seven. team roping, team roping. Bronc, bronc riding, riding. Calf roping. Calf roping. Five. We are the sixth. You're the event. sixth event. Okay. Very tricky. Anyways. I was counting heading and healing. Yes. Well, and I'm thinking when you call Procom and you have to get the trade list, like we're right. always number eight, so that means that's there's steer tripping too. Um, All right. Yeah. When you get a trade list, so there's at least eight. Anyways, um, so we're the we're the sixth event to go in the same thing with no prep after it starts. Right. Not to mention you know the stage they bring in for the whatever music yeah. thing, and there's just a lot going on beforehand that isn't all about barrel racing. So to me, the difference between barrel racing and rodeoing, when you make the choice to do one or the other, barrel races think for your horse. When they put on an event, they are entirely thinking of what's the best alley setup, what's the best ground situation. There's not crazy music playing. If there's a kid in the stands being crazy, they tell the kid to calm down. At the barrel race. At the barrel race. You know, like if there's a dog running around, like, yeah, it's just, there's, they calm the distractions because right. it's about the barrel horses. When you go to a rodeo, it's about the entertainment. Right. It's about the fans. It's about the well, whole scenario. Yeah, and you have seven other events that it's you have to It's about every with. other yeah. event. It's you're not the only one. So in rodeo, your job is thinking for your horse because nobody's doing it for right. you. And we are lucky that at the NFR, for example, we have Randy. We're lucky that at the, all these other rodeos, we have these awesome committees and tractor drivers and our association that's looking out for us to help us think for those horses. We're trying right. to get as many of those things knocked out ahead of time. But when you get there and you go down the alley, you accept that you chose to be here right. and run on this. So this is your decision now that you're here. We've done all the prep work. 
but it's time to let that go. Right. It used to really, really piss me off because every year at the national finals, <clears throat> a barrel horse might stumble and you can guarantee the next night on that old ground, it used to be deep. It was. They'd rip it. And they'd rip it. Well, as a steer wrestler who puts his legs knees. in the ground. Your precious knees. I'm like, okay, so we're, you know, and it used to bother me now. I don't care because I'm retired. Sure. Um, but it just, just the, it was always one-sided about the horses, the, you know, the barrel race and the barrel race and the barrel, barrel horses. I'm like, what about the steer wrestler's knees? The steer wrestler's knees. <laughs> you know? and, I, and I get it. I know it has to be good for everybody. Sure. But some of those people, which, and I know you're not one of them. We're worried, and you said it already, not just about one event. Mm -hmm. You knew that it, it, to make the rodeo work, it was a mechanism everybody's of involved. everybody involved, mm -hmm. um, which I appreciate that. Some barrel horses aren't like that. Well, most aren't, and, and there's a lot of times I'm not, you know, because this is, I think of it just like the volunteer situation at the gate. I think my job is the most important well, of all sure. people's jobs. Like, I'm, I'm here because for, for me yep. and my horse. And so, anyways, with all that said, in a lot of ways, I think in the ground, we actually all want the same thing. Agreed. Like, y'all want it firm with a little bit of movement. Yeah. We want it firm with a little bit of movement. Like, not too much grab, but just need to be soft enough. And the bucking horses, the bulls, yeah. like, they want it firm with a little bit but of movement. But I think this was way before Randy got in there. Oh, yeah. And they and yeah. they added more sand to the Definitely. to the old dirt. Definitely, what was in there. Um, right. Because I said, Randy, the, the ground the last few years at the NFR for, He's done a great job. I think for all the events has been exceptional. He's done a great job. It, it's it's a hard job. Like oh, he, yeah. he's given the job of putting dirt on a basketball court and making it good right. and taking care of the best athletes in the world. And I think he I think he does as good a job as he can, mainly because he cares and he tries. Mm -hmm. um, when we were in Arlington, he was dealing with dirt that he knew because it came from the American. It was right. the same dirt, and it was just the stadium next door. So he was working with a little bit of what he was already there for. But he was so. That was the first time we as a group had worked with him and he wanted our thoughts. He wanted our criticism. I'm thinking, you know this, like this is your deal. Right. Well, I don't know how to run a tractor. I can barely turn it on. But you, <laughs> th you're still asking our opinion. Like you're still wanting us to be involved because it's our horses and our lives and our careers on the line. So I just appreciate people that are willing to bend and work and listen. And I hope I can be one of those people. I'm sure I'm not as good at it as he is, but um, I think that's kind of what it takes for all of us in this spinning ship. Oh, yeah. From the volunteers to the executive committees to the NFR to the PRCA to the steer wrestlers and barrel racers. We have to come in with our expertise, but be willing to, to bend to make it work for everybody. Right. Well, from committee men to volunteers to contestants, the PRCA to volunteers. I said volunteers. Yes, Haley okay. and I got it figured out. Haley, thank you for joining me again. Four-time world champion, Haley Kinzel, her great horse sister, her new man, brother. I appreciate it, and we're looking forward to, uh, I'm going to say having you back on the show at some point. Thank you. Thank appreciate you. it. You bet. Are we, are we rolling? We are. I want to get this over. Oh, my gosh. That, that was, was mean. Good. Yeah, it was, cra was it? very crabby. <laughs>